Continuity and discontinuity is a widely discussed aspect in geology and geography, but not many know that they play an important role in understanding an ecosystem, especially when it comes to understanding one of India's most important hill ranges, the prehistoric and serene Eastern Ghats, home to a wide range of flora and fauna and some of India's rarest of the rare creatures. Located between Odisha and Tamil Nadu and passing through Telangana and Karnataka while hugging the eastern coastline of India close to the monstrous Bay of Bengal, the Eastern Ghats are way more older than the Western Ghats. The Eastern Ghats play a second fiddle to the Western Ghats when it comes to the Southwest monsoon. This is due to the presence of discontinuous and dissimilar mountain range. The Deccan Plateau lies between the Western and the Eastern Ghats. A general confusion prevails over the Deccan Plateau and the Eastern Ghats because the line of demarcation is exceptionally thin. The Eastern Ghats have their own distinct identification and we are here to discuss that. There are many things we overlook about this majestic hill range and that's the reason behind this video. Eastern Ghats don't have high altitude mountain ranges which means the interaction between the mountain ranges and clouds is significantly different compared to the Western Ghats. This is also one of the primary reasons that the Eastern Ghats do not get a mention during the Southwest monsoon period. But that doesn't mean that the Eastern Ghats do not have any role to play during monsoon because they do during the Northeast monsoon, a period when most of the southern states of India receive their share of annual rainfall and this is definitely aided by the Eastern Ghats range. When we analyze the Eastern Ghats, one thing is clear. They always play an active role but yet remain passive because of various other weather related factors that Northeast monsoon period of India depends on. It is even clear through various researchers that the Eastern Ghats played a really important role even during the Chennai floods of 2015 but many still believe it was just the depression that did what it did. A research on the role of Eastern Ghats during the Chennai floods of 2015 revealed that clouds can be blocked by Eastern Ghats remotely over the coast, a mechanism by which clouds can become stationary over the coast involving interaction between clouds, mountain and wind. When it rains, the raindrops evaporate, cooling the air in that region. This chunk of cold air over the surface is known as the cold pool. It takes more energy to lift the denser cold pool over the mountains. At certain speeds, the winds lack the energy to carry the cold pool over the mountains but have enough to hold them against the mountain, Mr. Jayesh Parthare, a research scholar of Indian Institute of Science, explained. Each region is unique with its own geographical settings and the weather patterns that develop are also different. Although one can draw some analogies, rules that apply over one region may not be valid over the other. However, the Eastern Ghats is more complex mechanism and was not yet identified. In that sense, this modeling study is unique. The primary difference between the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats is that the Western Ghats literally hug the west coast of India. Even in some places, we can see the Western Ghats ending very near to the shore. Whereas, in the case of Eastern Ghats, barring a few places, most of them are 200 kilometers away on an average from the coast, which we famously call the Coromandel Coast, and moreover, they are discontinuous. Odisha 
from where the mountain ranges start is perhaps a testament to the sheer existence and age of the Eastern Ghats. It has a whooping 32.98% of forest cover. The Eastern Ghats in this region rise sharply in the east and slope gradually in the west and this region is considered very old according to many geologists. Moving into the states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, the Eastern Ghats take shape and get their famous name and perhaps one of the continuous ranges, the Nallamala Hill Range. They run nearly north-south parallel to the Coromandel Coast for about 430 kilometers and merge in the south with the Seshachalam Hill Range which has the famous Tirumala Tirupati Temple. Perhaps one of the most happening tourism and pilgrimage spot on planet Earth, the Tirumala Tirupati Temple is a part of the Eastern Ghats. Tirumala, the temple town, is located at an altitude of 980 meters above the sea level and is surrounded by the Seshachalam range of Eastern Ghats. The temple of Lord Venkateshwara lies on the seventh peak of the hill range and is called the Venkatatri. One of the most visited places in this range is the Silathoranam, a natural ark and a distinctive geological wonder which is located just one kilometer away from the temple. The ark measures 8 meters wide and 3 meters in height and is eroded out by weathering agents like water and wind. Apart from just being a hill range, the eastern ghats throw a lot of surprises like this which we definitely would have experienced but discounted. Moving into the state of Tamil Nadu, the Eastern Ghats once again become discontinuous. Tamil Nadu is the only state in India where both the Eastern and Western Ghat ranges meet at the Nilgiri mountain range. The Eastern Ghat ranges in Tamil Nadu plays a huge role with respect to rainfall in the region because the state gets a very little quantum of rainfall from the southwest monsoon season and without the presence of the Eastern Ghats, the state of Tamil Nadu would have remained perennially dry. The Javadu Hill Range, which is a part of the Eastern Ghats, located in the districts of Trivannamalai and Velour, is one of the primary rain clouds producing foothills of northern Tamil Nadu. This range separates the above two districts and hosts one of the most frequented tourist hotspots in northern Tamil Nadu, the Bhiman Maduvu waterfalls. There have been so many instances where the British colonization favored this place thanks to the favorable cool climate that this range has amidst the scorching heat that these districts are famous for. Speaking of hill ranges, one cannot ignore the Aircar Hill Station, also fondly called as the Poor Man's Ooty in the Sairvarayan range of Eastern Ghats. Located at the district of Salem, Aircar receives tourists in large numbers and also has the Sairvarayan temple at the highest point. Having travelled through the entire length of Eastern Ghats, it would be an injustice not to discuss the rivers of Eastern Ghats. The Eastern Ghats are a source to a huge collection of rivers across India like the Vamsadhara, Pennar, Vellar, Gostani, Sharada, and Shabari, to name a few. Not only that, rivers that originate on the other sides of the Ghats pass through them and end finally in the Bay of Bengal. Some of them are the Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, and 
Tungabhadra, all of which are important sources of fresh water in the respective states that they pass through. The weather dynamics and climate conditions are way more complex in the Eastern Ghats region. This region certainly faces a lot of wrath and fury due to the frequent cyclone formations in the Bay of Bengal. This is a form of natural erosion and thus it makes the region less fertile than the Western Ghats. One can easily say that the Western Ghats have a direct role to play when it comes to Southwest Monsoon but to date there is no direct role that has been established between the Eastern Ghats and the Northeast Monsoon. This has a repercussion on the weather community because people tend to forget the active role they play during monsoon season especially when a cyclone happens. Wonder how? Cyclones that happen in the Bay of Bengal region are way more intense or stronger compared to the Arabian Sea. Every now and then a cyclone would definitely hit the Indian landmass and here is where the Eastern Guards chip in. What they do is once a cyclone moves inland through the Coromandel coast, it has to interact with the high altitude Eastern Guard ranges and perhaps such interaction over land will weaken the system drastically. Now many have a question, why is that no cyclone continues its journey especially in the northern India after making a landfall? The continuous parts of the Eastern Guards region would be the primary answer. But the Eastern Ghats, when it comes to the southern India, doesn't play the same role. Cyclone Varda would be a classic case of an example which safely negated the Eastern Ghats moving through the discontinuous region and thereby was able to move out into the Arabian Sea. You don't see such scenarios in the northern part of India and hence we can say the whole system of understanding the Eastern Ghats becomes more complex. Though Cyclone Varda was a very intense and a strong cyclone upon landfall, the Eastern Ghats range in the border areas of both Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh ensured that Varda weakened as a well-marked low pressure, reducing the cyclonic damages in the interior parts of Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. The remnants of Varda were strong enough and even after land interaction over the Eastern Ghats, it gave heavy rainfall for interior districts of Tamil Nadu like Vellore and Krishnagiri and also after a very long time, the city of Bengaluru received record-breaking rainfall of around 5 to 8 centimeters from the Bay of Bengal system. Now just imagine if there were no Eastern Ghats. As we head towards the end of this video, one thing is clear. The Eastern Ghats has always been an important player in terms of weather and its related dynamics, tourism, flora and fauna. Eastern Ghats are the sole defense mechanism for the Indian landmass against strong cyclones that originate in the monstrous Bay of Bengal. The very fact that many of you wanted this video to be made is a great sense of satisfaction for us. It is a testament that the Eastern Ghats have their own identity and have a unique role to play in controlling the Indian weather and its climate. We request you folks to please let us know what topics that we can work on in our upcoming videos so that we will have the satisfaction of making user friendly content and be in a better position to cater your needs. In the good cricket team, we need stars like Sachin Tendulkar and solid defenders like Rahul Rabbit. If Western Guards is a master blaster, then no wonder, by all means, the Eastern Guards is the wall. If you like our video, please do share it with your friends and family. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't and hit the bell icon for instant notifications on more exciting contents coming your way. Until then, this is Ramachandran Anantakrishnan signing off for MedConnect.